On this episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show, we talk about some of the ways that we stay current. We talk about websites, journal articles, how we use social media, a bunch of great things, and how we combine that with some live continuing education for some manual therapy skills as well. The Ask Mike Reinald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show. I'm here with Lenny McCrina, Dan Pope, Mike Scaduto. We're here at Champion PT and Performance up in Boston. See how I always say the same three things but try to mix up the order? Yes. Keep it fresh for the, for the <laughs> listeners. They appreciate it. You're right. They're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting it in that order. Yeah, they appreciate it. That was pretty they good. Yeah, we're, up, really, we're here at Champion with Drew Dudek from Belmont University, the College of Belmont University <laughs> in Nashville, Tennessee, the home of Mike Boyd. I think Mike listens to the podcast, right? Text me, Mike, if you get this. This will be this is how we'll find out. We're seeing Mike in a few weeks, so this will be good to, to, to see what's going on. But anyway, we're here with uh, answering more of your great questions, PT, fitness, sports performance, business, anything you guys want to talk about. Um, what do we got today, Drew? We got some good questions? Of course. Yeah? So we got Daniel from Australia. Hey, guys. Love the show. I'm really interested to know what are your favorite websites, apps, and journals to improve your PT and strength and conditioning knowledge. Also, also, which PTs have had the biggest influence on your career to date? Websites, apps, and journals. journals. That's what they said. Yeah. All right. We want to, I don't know, who wants to start? I guess I'll start. You want, the you, obvious you got one. Uh, I, I read Dan's website wow. a lot. Oh, fitnesspainfree. Fitnesspainfree.com. That's, that's been very influential, especially on how I treat uh, patellofemoral pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but really, I read, Dan, I read all these guys' websites. Um, so Dan, Lenny, Mike, um, Dave's website as well. Um, those have been kind of my staples. Do you read um, KieferLamy.com? I not in the last six months. I don't think there's <laughs> anything goes <laughs> um, And uh, journals, uh, BJSM. I, I kind of check that one out. Um, all the all sports. Yeah, all I the know. sports journals. You know. like the British slant more than the American uh, slant? I kind of like British. You don't like Every the American slant? I read it in an accent, so it helps. <laughs> this, it's definitely smarter because it's from Britain than, <laughs> than that. That's pretty good. I think we all read each other's sites, so I mean, we and we don't just do that because we know and respect each other, but I think we're all still learning from each other, so, you know, obviously all of our sites are definitely a good one. I like that. Um, I don't think of an app. What else? Yeah, you mentioned app. Well, you know, I mean, apps can be lots of different things. Like Instagram's an app, I guess. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, you know, you can think of it that way. So it's, you know, yeah. I don't know. What, what, what do you think, Len? Where, I mean, where are you learning from? I'm all over the place with um, with journals, just BJSM. But I'm I'm AJSM as well. I go. <laughs> I, there, I would go there first. I never read BJSM. I know. I, 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 <laughs> they got good stuff, and I've gone in there more. But AJSM, <laughs> uh, JOSPT, Journal of Sports Health. Those are all part of your sports. Uh, section a membership that's those are the journals you get so one um, more too the international and the international journal of sports pt speaking of mike void um <laughs> so and that. you also get the physical therapy <laughs> journal too but um so those <laughs> journal of shoulder and elbow surgery journal of bone and joint surgery arthroscopy uh med science sports and exercise journal of strength and conditioning research i am constantly perusing and looking at the online publish first section and you may check out my instagram because that's the stuff that I put out, stuff that's like hot off the press at Len Mac PT. And it's the stuff that's hot off the press that I'm trying to get out to people because I'm constantly scanning. So you gotta that's you gotta change your Instagram profile, bringing you cutting edge research hot off the press. Hot off the hot, press. Hot, hot, yeah, hot. hot, hot, hot say hot in Massachusetts. Hot, <laughs> right. hot, hot mail. Anyway. Yes. Long story. Uh, Eric Cressy, Mike Robertson for the strength and conditioning stuff. Um, ben Bruno. I'm trying to think of anybody else off the top of my head. You know, there's a ton of people that I'm trying to learn the strength and conditioning world as well. Being a PT, I think that's a huge focus of what we do here at Champion. So I need to completely understand how to deadlift and, and squat and everything, how to teach that. So looking for little tricks of the trade uh, to try to help promote, you know, my patients to, to do all this stuff better. 
Like, like that. What about other podcasts? I know Dan listens to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, podcasts is good. We'll, we'll include that in the apps. I think that's good. Yeah. All right, BJSM. That's the podcast. <laughs> that must be so <laughs> dull. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, <Exactly>. BJSM. <laughs> well, they've got AJSM has a podcast too, and I listen to that. They've got a five and five. You guys are listening to that? No. It's no. like in five minutes they describe the the five articles. I guess. That's you know, kind of that's a good idea. Pretty good. Um, Physio Edge, I like a lot because there, there's a ton of good stuff. They have some really, really good stuff. This, Mike, guy, uh, this guy's from Australia, right? The guy that asked the question. Yeah, yeah Physio Edge guy is from Australia. Dave, yeah. Dave Pope, I think his name is. Yeah, Dave Pope. Um, yeah. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I think you should get a subscription to something like Audible and start checking out some other realms to learn from because I think that, you know, we study a ton from physical therapy. The other part is that we incorporate a lot of other things, you know, that are going to help us out with our clinical practice, whether that be learning about things like sleep. I mean, if Tilly was here, it'd be kind of transduction and epigenetics, a lot of other crazy stuff. But I can't tell you how much I've grown as a professional just by reading books in that realm, right? More financial stuff, business related, um, that type of thing. So if you just have a subscription to something like Audible, listen to it every day on maybe the ride in, you know, a couple years down the line, you've have read so much, it's altered my own um, treatment so much and the way I am as a person. So I'd say that's another good way to go. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's, it's, it's not always just in, internal, right? Um, I, I jump in. I mean, I think we, we covered the journals really well. I think we got, you know, the basics of the website. I don't think there's some magical websites that you're missing out there right now. Um, I, I was thinking, while Lenny said a few people, I was thinking, like, who do I follow on social media to learn from? You know, and that's an interesting question because, the, you know, social media, YouTube, even podcasts to an extent, right? These, it's people like us that are producing content, right? And you are consuming that content and trying to learn from that person. The problem we're seeing right now, and I've posted about this a couple of times now on social media, especially Instagram, is we're seeing so many people at various points in their career. The whole like fake it till you make it concept that we see out there, there's so many people that are trying to use Instagram and social media right now to establish expertise and authority. Not branding. There's a big difference right here. You know, establishing branding is great, but to establish expertise where you just graduated and you're you're trying to tell the world that you're an expert at something is, is so challenging. And I will say for all the young people out there right now, um, if you try to do that and you try to establish yourself and make it sound like you are the expert of a topic when you're not and you're just learning it, everybody older and more experienced to you can tell right and we have no authenticity behind it we can we can see it and it, it's not going to work well for you and that's social media right now so i'll say the tip i will give you here is to find credible people that you like to learn from and then follow them on social media right <clears throat> don't search on social media for instagram influencers because that doesn't mean that's the best people have they published journal articles have they written books do they teach courses are they faculty at our university do they actually treat patients right or work with people are they just online fitness coaches right how many of those are out there right that don't know that that exercise isn't going to work for this person for example so Find people that you're like, man, I really, I've really been following this this person's, you know, journal publications here. I wonder if they're online. Like, oh man, Lenny's online. Not only does he publish some great stuff himself, but he's also, what'd you say? What'd you say? The hot bet? No, but the hot off the press. And the, and the, the, you know, whatever's hot off the press, he's also reviewing. Because now you can say, all right, Lenny's an expert. He's a trusted, credible source, and I think you can go from there. I think that's my biggest advice for learning on the internet right now because man we are seeing a lot of clowns out there just like <laughs> just just like putting up some stuff where we shake our head and say wow if they had only had a little bit more experience they'd know that that didn't really make sense so everybody below them was probably like wow that's great that was a cool exercise they showed and then everybody above them in the experience level was like uh oh, like man we don't think that way anymore it's you not know? realistic or they're trying to be different they're trying it doesn't fit the the, the, the average of every, what we're all doing. There's gonna be the extremists out there trying to push their agenda and their extreme positions and just be, be cautious. Yeah, and, and I guess to sum it all up too is I think one of the key components, and you nailed it in your question here, is you can learn from all these things. Right? If you're just learning from Instagram, man, you're gonna be in trouble, right? You can't learn that way. That's great, that's a good way of doing it, but you should be following journal articles. You should be getting new textbooks as they come out. You should be taking online courses. You should be you know, doing all these different things and putting them kind of together. So I, I would just say make sure you're putting it together. So, great. What else, Drew, we got another one? Got one more. I think we got one more. This was uh, two big questions, so we made a smaller one. All right, so we got Brandon from North Carolina. 
Hi, I'm a recent DBT grad who is interested in developing my manual, manual therapy skills. Are there any specific Con Ed courses or instructors you have personal experience with or have heard good things about, be it live, hands-on, or online learning? Or is it a better option to shell out the money and get a certification? Thanks. Wow, so, well, there's actually a bunch of questions all in one with that one there. So I thought these, these questions went well together, right? Because it was like, all right, here's how we learn online journals and stuff like that. And then what about Con Ed courses here? And just, I'll address real quick the concept of certification. Certification means nothing, right? Unless you want to be certified, there's no need to be certified. It's about the education. So pick and choose your Con Ed based on what you want to learn. And who cares if they give you a certification at the end? But you know, your question was like manual therapy based stuff, like how do you learn it? So if we're gonna learn online, we're gonna read journal articles, we're gonna read books, I think it's also pretty important that we also do some live con ed that's specific on manual therapy. So um, what do you guys think? What have you guys gone through? I, I, you know, we answer questions like this every now and then, and you know, we may repeat some of our answers from, from that, but you know, what, what, do you guys, what do you guys do? I, uh, I think we get a little too bogged down with the specifics of manual therapy, so I haven't really gotten into a certification or anything like that. I do some stuff. I use, obviously use manual therapy, but I think we get so specific in, in some of the techniques that are out there, I think it's a little excessive. So I, I can't recommend a specific manual therapy course because I, I think a lot of it is fluff. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I was expecting that answer. Hard, yeah. so, but, well, so... But I mean, they want to learn manual therapy. What do you What do you recommend? So I would say, like, get a mentor, or you can get some online stuff. You can take a class, but I think a lot of it is, um, I don't know. We're trying to teach things that I don't think we can truly do and, and feel, and I think it comes down to um, there's other things that are affecting the patient than what we think is the manual therapy. That's my opinion. I think some of the stuff we do is definitely influential. Some basic soft tissue stuff that you learn in PT school, some basic soft tissue stuff, um, but my rubbing somebody's muscle is not going to be any different, I don't think, than the way a certified manual therapist rubs it. It may feel a little different, and maybe that's the influence, but I think, uh, like we had a manual, we had a massage therapist that was a student recently, and people loved his technique. Great, he's a massage therapist. So hopefully I can learn a little from him. So maybe a massage therapy uh, type person can help you out with some of the specifics of working through muscle, but again, I, I, I don't know, I just, Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm an island in this group in that I just can't recommend a specific manual therapy program. It just, I haven't really done it, so maybe that's my bias as well. Well, that's that. And coming from my that's background of, of, of a speedy type environment of getting people in and out, I just never really had the time, so I just never used it. So, And I guess I've had somewhat success with my clients without having the certification. So. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you're more against the branded concepts of, of manual therapy than Maybe. the concept of manual therapy? Yeah, I'm not against the concept of manual therapy. I just think that <laughs> we... just clarify. Right, yeah, exactly. Right? No, I, I, again, I use it all the time. I use it multiple times a day. It's my, my thumb is probably jacked up. Um, maybe I need a certification. <laughs> my other thumb doesn't get jacked up. <laughs> We're all kind of thinking that. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm struggling to, to help you with this one. Maybe I am helping you and saying don't get too, too into it. I don't know. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, that's a little tough because I've, I've never really gone out. I've never done an active release course. I've never done a specific soft tissue course. Um, most of my education, at least from that regard, has been through mentors around me that have used it. I've used a lot of their tools, and then over the course of time, I just applied it to my own thoughts and beliefs and my own systems, and I've tried that. Um, I th I've taken a dry needling course through my old boss, Andy Free. I thought that was very good, synergistic dry needling. Um, I've taken a few joint mobilization courses through IAOM. I'm probably going to get that wrong, but International Association of Orthopedic Medicine or something along those lines. Um, what I will say is that I think a lot of those can be fairly similar. What's probably good is to get a little bit of mentorship on how to do specific techniques and then do a lot of practicing. And I can't right. tell you how many people are like, oh man, when I learned how to do dry needling, I was underwhelmed because I, I didn't get good results what it is. I think it takes a lot of practice afterwards and then you just have to figure out what you think works best for you, you know? Right. Um, I think I wanted to say that. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I still you think a lot of fluff though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if man learns fluff. Um, what do you think, Mike? All right, so I guess I haven't taken a formal manual therapy course. I think uh, you guys need to go to some courses, by the way. That would be yeah. that would be just how I would jump in. But, yeah. but So I'll give you my perspective from taking the courses, but sorry. Go ahead, well, I guess one that I'm interested in, it would be Anatomy Trains. I think I've read the book, um, and I think it's just a very interesting 
perspective on looking at anatomy, and I think they, they make some valid points, and they talk about some of the manual therapy techniques in the book, um, but I, I'm not formally trained, but I'm interested in that. Um, and then, I, like Dan said, I've learned pretty much all instru instrument-assisted techniques and uh, manual therapy techniques uh, from my mentors, these guys, and I kind of pick up things from them, so they probably have a blended uh, repertoire, and I'm kind of uh, a mutt as well in that regard. I like that blended repertoire. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I get Lenny's point, right? I mean, I don't think it matters. Like, if you go to an instrument-assisted course, I don't know if it matters, like, who teaches it, what tool it is, if you're getting a certification, <clears throat> that type of thing, you know? But there are some things to learn. It's not just rubbing a stick on somebody, you know? So there, I think there's better ways to do it, you know? So I'd say there's, I think there's benefit in going to these courses. Um, I've been to a lot. I've been to ART. I've been to Graston. I've been to dry needling. I've been to multiple dry needlings from different people. I've been to neuromuscular therapy. I've been to a soft tissue one. I've been to joint mobilizations, manipulation ones. I've been to uh, more than that. I've been to uh, a ton. Uh, you know, I, I've, I'm, you know, all the anatomy trains ones with Tom Myers and stuff like that. I, I would say the the benefit of going to that is you're saying I'm going to dedicate the next two, three, four, whatever days to practicing and to having somebody be my mentor to show me the techniques and go through it and practice. And not just practice yourself, but practice it you know, being on you. So I would say, you know, I'm very pro you going to them. I don't know if there's a special one out there. I think I'm gonna take Lenny's main point, I think, is that I don't think there's a special <laughs> one out there. It's just, you know, there's many out there that you can take, but it's the concept of practicing. And then I would say the other thing is, is I will go as a consumer and like I'll go get soft tissue therapy from somebody. I've had neuromuscular therapy done to me. I've had all those things I've, I've pretty much talked about done on me. And I've gone as a patient paying out of pocket, right? Like intentionally to try to learn and to feel these things on me. So if my leg's hurting me, I may go see somebody and try to pick up something. They're like, oh man, I'm gonna use that technique on my people next time, you know, I, I see somebody with a similar thing. So, um, you know, so I, I'm just a big fan of that structured practice is how I think I would say it, which is why I think it's good. Because look, we talked earlier in this episode about learning online and reading journal articles. You have to practice your hands, right? It's not just what you know, but it's what you can do with your hands. Len, why do you think Logan, our past student who was a massage therapist, why do you think people thought he had better hands than us? Well, yeah, no, because he, he, uh, he probably has a more, not honestly more hours because I've been practicing longer than him, but he, he, his, he learned a specific technique and uh, probably to a different level than I understand it, which completely, I completely understand. That's why I said maybe a massage therapist or something like that. It depends on your, your setting and your location, the people you're seeing. Um, but I, I definitely practice is a, definitely a big part of it. But I think, I think I'm turned off from all the different systems and people that are out there <laughs> pushing their, their new technique. And it just, it just, it's eye rolling that to see all this stuff and I think I just get turned off from everything when I see so many people trying to trying to tweak you know when it just comes down to maybe some soft tissue movement and exercise I mean that's that's my practice is some easy hands-on stuff and then just get people moving and comfortable and and exercise so I, I, I you know that's that's my that's my bread and butter I guess you know the only other thing I'd add to just <clears throat> thinking while Lenny was talking there was that Go to one of these courses, you know, despite Lenny's advice. No, just <laughs> go, go to one of these courses with a coworker, right? So that way you guys can practice on each other when you get back, and then you can do it in service and you can share and stuff like that. Because I think it's all about practicing. When you're younger in your career, man, I would get together with some people in your clinic or even like the community and the neighborhood around you, and like have like once a month where you get together and practice stuff and stuff like that. I think that'd be that'd be really neat. So. Uh, anyway, lots of great stuff. How we combine some online journal books, all that stuff with some hands-on stuff. I think it's a good way to, to put it together. So this is a good education episode. Hopefully, this um, you know some of these tips will help you get better and refine yourself as a professional as well. But anyway, head to mikerano.com, click on that podcast link. You can ask us questions. Just fill out that form, and then rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, anything else that you listen. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.